Let me first uh, thank the organizers uh, for um, uh, allowing me to come here and experience the fine nuances of British summer uh, in Cambridge. Uh, so, um, once again, uh, is, this is going to be very difficult. I've been tasked to give a review of the formation of galaxies with cosmological hydrodynamical simulation in 20 minutes. So, um, this is going to be a broad brush thing uh, where I'm going to talk about the problem to give a little bit uh, of, a, of a background of what I'm talking about uh, and why it is a daunting problem to solve. Um, I'm going to then move on to give a brief uh, historical perspective and update you on the current status of this cosmological simulation. And then I'm going to give, obviously, a biased review of recent and not recent uh, simulation results. It's going to be biased in the sense that I'm going to have to, uh, uh, I'm going to pick uh, a few results that I think are interesting um, uh, beyond uh, the broad agreement that, that these cosmological simulations have, have, have reached. Um, and, um, and also, um, it's going to be obviously non-exhaustive because last time I checked, there were more than, uh, for Illustri CNG alone, there are more than 180, uh, 850 uh, papers, uh, which would give me 1.5 seconds per paper if I had to uh, uh, summarize this. Um, so, and then finally, I'll, concu uh, I'll conclude by giving you uh, new exciting developments uh, uh, that are um, coming in the field. So uh, let's start with arguably what is the most obvious reason why this is a, a daunting problem uh, or tremendous challenge for, uh, for uh, computational simulation. Uh, there is a staggering uh, uh, amount of spa uh, spatial scales to cover. I would, I would, so, 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 so the spatial scales are here, uh, right? So it's about a minimum 12 orders of magnitude um, uh, from, uh, from 10 to the minus 3 parsecs to a gigaparsec. And, and, all of these, um, and all of these processes actually matter for galaxy formation, right? From, uh, 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 as, as, as you'll see in this talk, from, uh, from the, the, the presence of, of uh, active galactic nuclei feedback on, on the smaller scale to where stars form in molecular clouds, right? Uh, that, of course, is the internal processes that shape uh, the galaxy properties, but of course we also have to worry about uh, the large-scale structure environment, whether galaxies are in clusters or not on the gap parsec scales, and even um, even about the large-scale structure, you know, uh, how close they are from filaments, uh, etc. How does this shape their properties? And what has been done um, uh, is actually uh, split uh, the problem into into two bits. Uh, which are indicated by the blue arrows, right? The cosmological boxes, which is which I will talk at the beginning of my talk, which allow you to do uh, statistics, uh, but do not uh, uh, resolve the galaxies very well, right? Because their minimum resolution scale is on the order of kiloparsec, or a little bit better. And then a whole slew of zooms uh, of the zoom approach, where you retain the large scale environment, but modeled at very uh, a degraded resolution and you go down to the parsec scales where you start resolving the molecular cloud. And of course, um, subgrid models uh, in all these problems are unavoidable, right? So you see even the zooms here at parsec scale um, do not probe uh, are, still, are still three orders of magnitude below the scale at which uh, supermassive black holes and, and AGN feedback lives. So um, a very, very challenging problem. So of course, uh, also, the, the thing to take into account is that this is a linear scale, where 12 order of the magnitude, really, we don't want to do 1D simulations, we want to do 3D simulations, so it's really 36 orders of magnitude that we have to model. Uh, and if that was not enough, uh, this is a, a fundamentally an inverse cascade problem, uh, and that's what makes it very, very challenging. What I mean is that what actually happens on the small unresolved scales for which one has to employ the subgrid models, right, actually shapes the global properties of galaxies on the scale that are resolved by the simulation, right? And so this is a point that's, uh, that's uh, uh, made by this cartoon illustration where I simply um, I take the, um, the galaxy stellar mass function here, shift it on a plot where I plot the halo uh, mass function and multiply it by the baryon fraction. And what you see immediately is that they're at the low mass end and at the bright mass end, there is a major difference in shape, right? Uh, which tells you that either you're or, or overestimating uh, in, uh, in cold dark matter uh, models uh, the number of objects at the high mass end, 
uh, by orders of magnitude, or you're estimating that mass by up to an order of magnitude. And of course, the way to uh, resolve that uh, uh, discrepancy, major discrepancy in cosmological simulations, is to have AGN feedbacks. Now, AGN feedback at the right hand, um, and, and stellar feedback, also a subgrade model, uh, at, the, um, at the low mass end. Of course, AGN feedback is, is, uh, is actually the least resolved of the processes and the least well known that we know, and it actually does impact um, uh, majorly. Uh, the properties of most massive galaxies, which should be the best result sim uh, objects in the simulations. Um, and so um, I realize that it's, it's a pretty unsatisfactory statement, but I believe that most of the differences in current um, uh, in galaxies properties that are, uh, that are reported by the, uh, by the various groups um, main, are mainly driven by the different subgrid model implementation that they use to address this problem, rather by, than the, by the method that they use to solve the partial equations of hydrodynamics. And I'll come back to that briefly. Um, of course, after laying out for you this uh, somewhat pessimistic view, I'd like to, uh, uh, to uh, go to a, a historical perspective um, uh, to um, cheer us up a little bit. Uh, and show us that, uh, that we've co actually come a long way in this field. The first thing I want to point out is that uh, it's a very, very young field. It's actually, um, it's actually younger than the IOA, right? Um, it's, um, uh, it's, it was all uh, pioneered in the 1919s by people that, um, early 1990s, by people like Katz, Hunquist, Weinberg, but also Chan and Ostryka, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, um, Gus Everard, um, um, and etc. Um, an example of the kind of resolution that was available at this time is given on this um, on, on this uh, on this plot, right? Where you see that the green dots are the cold dense gas that they call in this paper galaxies, right? With a gas mass particle of 10 to the 9 solar masses and a gravitational softening of 20 kiloparsec, right? So essentially, we've moved um, from a regime, and so this is, this is an example in the Chen and Ostryka paper of the same year, 92, uh, the galaxies are actually dots. So the galaxy is the subgrid model here, or if you want, resolve with a handful of particles, all right? To uh, what is now, I, I cut out a volume from the Illustris TNG, uh, uh, 100 simulation, right, of the same, um, of the same size, and the resolution, the, uh, the resolution is given here. So a, a thousand times better math resolution and a gravitational softening of the order of a kiloparsec, which means that uh, these galaxies are, uh, are um, resolved or, or about resolved um, in this field, right? And of course, um, I'm cheating because we are also have in the Illustris TNG a hundred times more volume than we had in these early simulations. So we've come the long way, right? Um, uh, the, 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 the second point I want to make is that uh, even though uh, we, uh, we might be worried about, um, about the subgrid model effective, uh, affecting the large scales, um, uh, the early successes of such simulations were with uh, mapping the properties of the Lyman Alpha forest on large scales, right? Now, the new generation of simulations haven't altered this picture, right? So there is hope that if you push the subgrid models very far down the scale, right, as far down as possible, uh, and you look far to, for properties that are far away enough from these scales, uh, they might not be affecting the properties uh, that much. And the reason for that is that because what you do on these small scales is ultimately coupled to the hydrodynamics equations uh, that you're actually solving, right? And so uh, hopefully that is handled um, uh, pretty, pretty well. All right, so this is a, a slide that I uh, borrowed from the TNG collaboration, uh, which gives you the number of galaxies that are resolved with a mass of 10 to the 9 solar mass that, that, that are resolved, uh, version of the uh, baryon mass resolution. And you have these two boxes, the, uh, the large box regime, um, uh, that, um, that I will discuss uh, in a minute, and the zoom simulation. So you see uh, the trade-off, right? Uh, not a lot of resolution, but a lot of statistics here. Uh, and um, 
Um, and of course, high resolution, uh, uh, generally more physics as well. I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, but very few galaxies uh, in the zoom regime. Okay. So, and uh, in between, there's a no man's land um, where, um, where they've put the TNG 50 and I've added the New Horizon um, galaxy uh, simulation here, uh, which, is, which are in between not quite the resolution of zooms, but uh, a, a large number uh, of galaxies there, which, um, which uh, will be useful uh, for me to illustrate uh, what are the differences between the two, because especially with the New Horizon, which is a uh, zoom simulation of uh, a sub-volume of the Horizon AGN simulation, I can, uh, I can actually um, uh, show you how uh, different galaxies uh, uh, look like. So here you have uh, the same galaxy um, uh, on the top, uh, edge on and, and, and face on and edge on view in the zoom New Horizon simulation, right? Uh, which, is, uh, which is exactly the same as, as, as the galaxy in the, in the Horizon AGN um, uh, simulation, which is, which is right there. So you can't really see the numbers, but if you look at the dark matter halos on, the, on, on this side, right? The mass has converged to, uh, to a percent or so, right? But the gas looks different. Um, and of course, the galaxy itself looks vastly different, being resolved with a, with a few thousand particles here to, uh, uh, mil to a million particle um, in this simulation. And you can see that we, um, uh, we can now talk uh, uh, the difference. The main difference is that the, if you want to study the, the structure of the, of the thin disk, et cetera, et cetera, you can only do it in the boxes where the resolution uh, is much better. Um, I'm going to talk about, um, uh, so I have a brief slide about the Horizon AGN simulation because, which is typical of these boxes, what I'm going to say is more general than that and I'm going to show you comparisons of all the, the simulation properties in different simulations by different groups. But the reason why I use this is not only I'm familiar with this, uh, with this kind of simulation, it's, it's this, this, um, uh, but, but also it has, it has a, a, a um, a counterpart which is called Horizon No AGN, which is exactly the same identical simulation, except we've switched off AGN feedback in it, which allows me to, in turn, show you uh, what this subgrid model is doing to the properties of the galaxies with, uh, with much more uh, detail. Okay, so I need to speed up a little bit and tell you about uh, the comparisons and the, 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 the con uh, between the simulations, right? So I'm going to start with properties where the simulations are in broad agreement. So from these simulations, you can actually do uh, um, uh, mock, uh, mock images. Uh, so here is a mock 14 square degree field in URC uh, with no dust, right? And from that, uh, from these kind of things, you can actually apply the same, um, um, the same uh, uh, t um, selection uh, techniques uh, that are in the observations, and you can come up with uh, the galaxy stellar mass function, which is uh, 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 one of the uh, 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 one of the most uh, fundamental proper, uh, properties that you can uh, you can actually uh, uh, measure for galaxies. So the number of galaxies are for a given stellar mass, and so you see here as a function of redshift. Um, um, and what I want you to so the the gray the gray lines are the horizon AGN simulations, and the and the and the uh, uh, dashed uh, pink lines are the ones with no AGN. Okay, so the, the exact identical counterpart without the AGN, and the color points are the data. And you see, as a function of redshift, there is broad agreement, right? And this broad agreement extends, so this is from a um, uh, 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 recent review by, by uh, Torsten, um, where he plots uh, at redshift zero all the, uh, the, um, um, uh, the uh, galaxy star mass function from all the simulations. And there is broad agreement to the level of a uh, factor two or three uh, between all the simulations, okay? So that's one, uh, uh, that's the main, uh, that's broad agreement for the main uh, um, uh, property. It extends, this broad agreement extends a little bit further, right? It extends, uh, and I'm showing you, uh, of course, there's plenty of scaling relations that I could show you here where there's broad agreement. The one that I decide to show you is the, um, is the uh, uh, stellar mass versus radius, right? And the reason, the reason for that is historical, uh, partly, because in the late 90s, early 2000, it was thought to be a very difficult uh, relation uh, to actually uh, produce for cosmological simulation, mainly because of resolution, but also uh, 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 um, 
of, of the, the lack of stellar feedback that could, um, um, that, that was preventing uh, the angular momentum, enough angular momentum uh, uh, from uh, low angular momentum to be ejected from the galaxy and, and, and get uh, large sizes, the large sizes that were observed. So here what you see uh, um, um, as an illustration point of that is what happens in the horizon AGN simulation. So the, the dashed are uh, the, um, uh, the, the data and the, the solid curves are the simulation split into passive and active galaxies. And this is in the no, uh, uh, in the no AGN simulation. So you see the galaxies are way too compact. So you can't really see uh, from this picture of uh, uh, the compactness but what you see uh, is that uh, without AGN and with AGN, so these are the same galaxies in both simulations again, the morphology completely changes, right? And of course, the morphological mix, the fraction of ellipticals as a function of mass, uh, is actually uh, fairly well matched uh, in all the simulations. Right. Since the, uh, uh, so what you can do, what, what's an interesting result that has come out of the simulation is since this AGN feedback uh, is very important for uh, supermassive galaxies, you can look at the properties of supermassive black holes <laughs> through cosmic ages. Uh, once again, this is taken from the Horizon AGN simulation. The data points are the masses of the black holes in the simulation um, as, uh, are the red points here, um, again, as a function of redshift. And the, and the bands are, are observational estimates. So again, broad agreement. You can do that for, uh, you can look at, this, at the uh, black hole mass stellar mass relation in all the simulations again, right? And you see that <clears throat> so the gray uh, band is, is basically the Z0 uh, estimates, observational estimates, and each of the line curves here shows you uh, the uh, evolution of this relation for all the simulations that are presented here. And, while, and, and the scatter is shown below. And once what, you see that there is a, a, a broad agreement between the simulations, there are differences already uh, beginning to show up. And sometimes... Um, so some of the simulations are actually where the blue lines are on top of the red lines, right? And some of the simulations there below, right? So it means a different uh, redshift evolution uh, for there and different scatter. Yes? Okay, three minutes. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna need to massively speed up. Uh, so uh, I thought I'd say something about, uh, the, for the cosmologist here, um, and so these AGN feedback actually imprints even larger scales than just massive galaxies uh, uh, and imprints the large scale power spectrum. So here is a comparison. Um, um, so here, here they disagree, right? Um, um, there's a bunch of, of different comparisons, right? You see the suppression of power com of the, uh, for the power spectrum of baryons uh, compared to dark matter only. AGN feedback plays a role here, star formation and cooling here, okay? Uh, and this is related to the fact that, um, um, that the gas, uh, that they disagree, even though they agree on the main galaxy properties, the, the simulations disagree a lot for the gas that is around galaxies. Not the gas in the IGM, as I said, um, uh, this is an early um, um, success of the simulations. But if you look at the CGM, uh, which is here as a function of halo mass, right? This is a review by Crane and Van der Voort, a recent review. You see that the simulations are all over the place. They seem to be better for low mass halos, the inflowates, uh, but, um, uh, but, um, but they, they, they completely disagree. And this is um, uh, otherwise. And this is, um, this is kind of, of, of worrisome because this uh, CGM gas close to galaxy uh, is the ideal place where to actually distinguish between uh, the different feedback of galaxies. And the reason why they, there is also a major disagreement is because this is a very difficult uh, thing to model. Uh, these gas is thought uh, by, uh, through observations to be very multi-phase, uh, multi so each line of sight inter, uh, interpolating, um, uh, going through a cold phase, et cetera, et cetera, and out of the reach of the resolution of this simulation. So here is an example of zoom simulations where you, you actually go from the uh, original simulation uh, resolution in these boxes to much better resolution in the IS, IS, uh, IG, uh, CGM. Um, and you see that the structures are completely different um, and, and uh, filaments emerge, the cold phase emerge, et cetera, et cetera. I'm gonna skip about um, the other large scale properties that are in agreement uh, in fairly, uh, some of them in agreement, some of them in disagreement galaxies. So that's, that's a bunch of things that have been done uh, 
these days, and I'm going to uh, pass on the dependence of galaxies properties on the cosmic wave, which has been studied both in observations and simulations. Um, so this is, this is a, a plot extracted from this paper, which is actually an observational paper where uh, they actually measured it uh, in, um, in, um, in the gamma survey. Uh, but uh, here's the measurement, the equivalent measurement for the horizon AGN simulation. To move on to say a few words about, uh, about going to, uh, uh, to simulations that are either in between or zoom simulations where you can actually, uh, so in here more the simulations that are in between uh, the boxes and the zoom regime where you can actually measure uh, the thinness uh, and the thickness of the disk and separate them from one another. Uh, and, and, um, and, and, do that, um, um, and do that for a population of galaxies of different masses. So very interesting uh, work there. Uh, low, uh, these simulations allow you to talk about low surface brightness dwarfs, the simulations that are in between the boxes, right? So these guys are the guys that are missing from the uh, galaxy stellar mass function that I was showing with the LDSS. So here is the plot of the surface brightness with, between versus stellar mass with the completeness of the Sloan here and the, the that the data in yellow and the simulations, uh, uh, the, the simulation result in, in black. And you see that a whole lot of, 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 of these galaxies are, are, are missed by current survey, but it's not going to last uh, with Robin and LSST coming online very soon. So very exciting uh, predictions from the simulations. Also, um, you can, of course, uh, now do the, cup, the cusp and core problem for a population of galaxies in the simulations. And in the few seconds that I have left, I would like to, uh, I would like to move on and talk about the exciting stuff uh, that is uh, coming back, because we're c coming now, because we're pushing, we're at the level, we're pushing the subgrid models into the resolved, uh, the point where we can resolve the, the giant molecular clouds and whatever. Um, um, and so some extra physics is needed beyond simply putting uh, what I call source or sink terms in the energy equations on aerodynamics. MHD is one of them. This is a paper, a uh, recent paper, that where we showed that uh, we can start to follow uh, the, uh, the amplification of the magnetic field, the primordial magnetic field uh, in galaxies. Um, and of course, if you do, even if you don't believe that the MHD, um, so magnetic fields are important in shaping the properties of galaxies, uh, they certainly are important uh, for doing the transport of cosmic rays. Right, uh, and Christoph here uh, will talk about that later. Uh, but here I want to point out that these are, this has potentially dramatic consequences for the stellar mass of galaxies. So these are uh, uh, stellar mass versus time, uh, or redshift if you prefer, uh, for hydrodynamics, magnetohydrodynamics, and CR MHD simulation. And you see the CR MHD simulation is suppressed uh, by uh, sometimes at high redshift by up to an order of magnitude just by the presence of the cosmic rays. Um, of course, these cosmic rays, um, uh, 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 the properties of the outflows that are driven by cosmic rays, uh, which I highlighted here, as colder and smoother outflows uh, with higher mass loading factors uh, play a role. And this is a picture uh, that seems to be emerging from this um, um, simulation, um, highly resolved simulations at high redshift. Um, something that was missing from the box and zoom uh, um, thing was um, uh, plot uh, was also the, uh, um, the efforts uh, done at high redshift galaxies and there's going to be talks about this uh, in, 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 in uh, looking at how the ISM and the fine modeling of the ISM can actually have consequences even for reionization where binary stars can actually speed up the reionization uh, by a lot. Uh, um, and finally, um, um, two extensions of this uh, is that uh, we are pushing, uh, we are now uh, pushing this not only to, to, to do this radiative transfer and self consistently coupled to chemistry uh, and dust uh, uh, in, at high redshift, but we're pushing it in the, in the low redshift limit. And we are able to recover, uh, 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 this is a mass fraction as a function of temperature, the multiphase ISM that we see in galaxies. This here is a nice picture of the N2 uh, uh, emission uh, in one of, uh, of the simulated galaxies, right? Um, this uh, is, uh, includes dust uh, uh, modeling, uh, dust destruction, and grain formation, uh, which is very important for all the thermal chemistry. So that's, that's where uh, we're going. And I'm going to put uh, my conclusions uh, right now and hope I haven't uh, gone too far. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>